How do you build a high-end workstation PC when you can't buy any of the parts you want? Let's take a look. Yo, what up YouTube? Crash Wilcox and man, it has been a while. If you're familiar with my channel at all, you may have noticed that I've been gone for a little while. And if you haven't noticed, well, you're an insensitive prick. But anyways, I love you and I need you and I like you just the way you are. But I have been on the road for about the past five, six months or so. And I've tried to put out a few videos, but it's been a struggle. So now I'm back and doing what I like to do the most and that's putting together a PC. So this time we're gonna put together a high-end workstation. That's the plan. Um, so we're gonna do this in a couple of different videos just so I'm not you know, running this an hour long. This first video is gonna be sort of the parts overview of the PC. And then the second video will be the peripherals and the rest of the workstation that we're going for. Uh, the third video will be a deeper dive into some of the benchmarks, both gaming and content creation. We'll have benchmarks in this video, but there'll be just a few in the more synthetic benchmarks. And then the last video we'll kind of dig into as we go through the parts list here. So with that being said, we'll jump into these and I'll do them a little bit out of order from what I would normally do. Um, so first one we'll get out of the way is the power supply. So thermal take, tough power, 850 watts. So the original plan here was to maybe go with something in the Ryzen 5000 and RTX 3000 series. So I wanted to get enough power supply to not be an issue with those parts. So 850 watts, plenty of power for basically whatever you're gonna use, um, unless you're SLIing something, which why would you do that today? So 850 watt thermal take, trusted brand, big thing with a power supply, you just wanna turn it on and forget about it. You don't want it to be an issue, something you think about, this will make sure that's not a problem. So good pro uh, good product, good power supply. And then the next one we'll get out of the way is the cooler. So if you have watched this channel at all, you're very familiar with the Dark Rock Pro 4. Price to performance, she's just a beast. Uh, it will cool whatever you're gonna put underneath it and it will do it silently. So it's hard to beat and uh, that's kind of why we went with it. And also we're kind of going with a no flash kind of build here as you're gonna see as we go through this. You know, not a lot of RGB, not a lot of, you know, flash to this thing, it just works. So that's what we went with for the CPU cooler. All right, for the hard drives. So for the operating system, we went with the 980 Pro, a 500 gig. Um, the reason we chose this book, I mean, really it's pretty simple. It's the best hard drive on the planet right now that you can kind of buy. Um, it says 7,000 megabyte read speeds. You'll see as we get into the benchmarks what I'm actually getting on this, but lightning fast, Samsung makes the best hard drives, you know, on the planet and this is, the cream of the crop currently in March, 2021. So that's what we went with here. You know, when it comes to operating systems and you're getting a lot of just, you know, small bites of information that it's pulling constantly, having a fast SSD is gonna just make everything that you do on your computer smoother, quicker, more enjoyable. And this does, this, does that better than anything currently. Um, you can see the box is already open and as, you'll see as we go through some of these parts. I've already built this computer and uh, confessional time. I <laughs> made this video already, had a few bumps in the road getting the computer up and running. So in my stupidity and my rage, I wiped windows and with that, all the hard drives with the videos that were already made. So um, lesson learned there. But uh, so now I'm just remaking this as, uh, yeah, just remaking it, my penance for the stupidity. So that's why the boxes are open. 
Um, the also or the other hard drives that I don't have up here, but you'll see on the screen um, for the game drive and the media drive. I went with one terabyte each. Those are silicon power and they're Gen 4 SSDs as well. And they silicon power is a little bit lesser known of a brand, but they're still, I think, very trustworthy. I've used silicon power and Plenty of builds and their products always work. Price to performance wise, they're hard to beat. Uh, and you'll see when I go through the uh, the benchmarks for those, their speeds are just as fast as any of the, uh, you know, Sabrent Rocket Gen 4s or any of the other kind of first gen Gen 4 SSDs. So, um, you know, Samsung is in a different class, but these are still extremely fast, great for games, great for media whatever it happens to be. So we're using two of those. So we're gonna have two and a half terabytes of Gen 4 SSD uh, in this computer. So that's very nice. Moving on to the RAM. So again, the boxes are open because the RAM's in the computer. But for this, we went with 64 gigabytes of Patriot Blackout, um, 3600 megahertz CL18. And the reason we landed on this is really anything above 3,200 megahertz, you're not gaining a whole lot of performance, but you're spending a whole lot of extra money. So 3,600, it's kind of a, just a good sweet spot for price to performance and 64 gigs, probably more than I'm gonna need. But again, this is gonna last me hopefully for a couple of years. And I just wanted to make sure that RAM wasn't ever gonna be a limitation, especially as I sort of start branching off into trying to learn 3D animation and that sort of stuff as well. So just didn't want that to be a limitation. And as you can see on the screen, I got this for a really good deal. And uh, yeah, hopefully that's just gonna be a nice product. Like I said, you can go faster and you'll see maybe a small FPS bump, especially when it comes to gaming and stuff, you might see a small bump but it's not gonna be as noticeable as the amount of money you pay is gonna be. So 3,600 megahertz is a good place to land. All right, moving on to the big dog. So for motherboards, we went with the B550 Aorus Master. The reason, the big reason why I went with this motherboard, as we've already talked about, I have three M.2 NVMEs. This motherboard supports three M.2 MVMEs. Um, but unlike most other B550 motherboards, this board supports three Gen 4 M.2s. And, you know, most B550s will support one, and X570 motherboards will support, you know, multiple Gen 4. But this B550 will support all three of them, but you do have a trade off with that. So, if you're running multiple M.2s in this motherboard, it will be borrowing PCIe lanes from the uh, GPU or from the CPU. So your GPU in that respect will only be running in a by eight configuration. So you won't get the full 16 lanes to your GPU. So that's the trade off. Um, and that's gonna be the follow-on video or one of the follow-on videos that we have here. So if you're interested in seeing any of those other videos, please take a second to like this, subscribe to the channel, and then hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of those. And uh, we'll have a video doing the by eight versus by 16 configuration to see if there's actually a difference. I don't suspect there will be because gen four by eight should still be enough bandwidth for maybe a 3090 might you know, you might run into a limitation there, but I don't suspect that's gonna be an issue. Um, so the three M.2s was a big consideration here. The other consideration was the IO. I just wanted no limitations on the IO. I wanted plenty of ports and connectivity. And this motherboard does that very well. Um, tons of USB, Wi-Fi, you know, USB-C, it's got, everything so very nice io tons of storage connectivity and just overall a really nice motherboard for the money so that was the decision there all right so the last two if you're trying to build a pc anytime from the end of 2020 into early 2021 we're sitting here in march 2021 
you know just how hard it is to find a CPU and a GPU. And even older used GPUs are going for astronomical amounts of money. And this is just maybe more of a side note, but me personally, I just can't bring myself to pay a scalper exorbitant amount of money for a part. Um, just can't do it. I know maybe in their mind, they think like, oh, it's just capitalism. I'm just making a dollar because, you know, supply and demand, whatever they justify. It's not capitalism. Uh, it's essentially hostage taking, right? Like, oh, you love your kid, do you? Uh, well, I'm going to take him from you and then you can pay me a million dollars to get him back. That's essentially what they're doing, right? They beat you to the store. So they buy up the last GPU and go, oh, do you want this? I'll charge you double for it. Um, that's not capitalism. So not a big fan of that, just couldn't do it. I'm perfectly okay paying AMD or Intel or Nvidia, you know, a lot of money, whatever they deem to charge, you know, Intel's always been one to be charging you a little bit extra, right? But to me, I mean, that is capitalism. I'm fine with that, right? Like they spend money on the R and D, they spend money on the production and the marketing and all that sort of stuff. They've made a product and they're charging you for whatever they deem fit to charge you. So I don't have a problem paying them, even if that price is higher than what I would like it to be. So I'm off my soapbox now. Had a couple of options when it came to CPU, right? Do you go with a lower tier CPU and just wait for one of the newer 5000 series or maybe you're into you know a lot more gaming and you want like an 11th gen intel something like that so you get something lower tier to bide your time i went the other way i decided to get the best that i could find currently because like i said i've been waiting since september october and none of this stuff has been available yet so i'm not holding my breath any longer so for that we went with the ryzen 9 3950x uh, for a workstation build, I decided I would rather have cores over speed. And, you know, here's the thing, right? Like this is last gen's cream of the crop CPU, right? Best CPU on the planet last year. It doesn't automatically become worthless this year, right? It's still going to be amazing. Um, you guys have seen all the videos. You've seen all the benchmarks. You know how well it performs and it's going to do just as well today as it did six months ago. So that was the decision here. Maybe down the road, Black Friday, early next year, something, there's more products available, then we'll upgrade if we need to. But I don't wanna sit here and hold my breath and limit myself, you know, because I think maybe someday I'll find a 5900 or 5950X, whatever it happens to be. So 3950X, it's gonna be a monster just like it always was. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then for the last one, the GPU, my God, Bitcoin, you have made <laughs> PC building a nightmare, but we love you. Um, so I had to go a little unconventional here, right? Same thing, didn't wanna pay a scalper. You can't even find last gen stuff new. You know, you can find a 3950X today, you can buy those, um, but you can't find a 5700 XT or a, 2070. I mean, it, it's difficult to find. So went a little unconventional here. And for the GPU, we went with the Radeon Pro. Oh, we went with a workstation graphics card. You don't see a lot of these. Um, and the reason we chose these, so, or chose this, um, the W5700 falls somewhere in between a 5700 and a 5700 XT as far as performance. Um, TDP is a, a little bit higher, um, power draws a little bit higher than a 5700, boost clocks I think are a little bit higher than 5700, sort of in that middle ground area. And, uh, you know, this kind of falls in line, you know, workstation graphics cards cost more than their gaming counterparts, right? I mean, you can see this price on the screen, it's pretty high. And there's reasons for that, you know, the quality assurance that goes into building a workstation card should be a little bit higher than what it is for a gaming graphics card. I mean, you like to think that they're high for all of them, but they should have, you know, 
a little bit extra QA when it comes to a workstation card. But then also the software, the driver software that goes along with it, it should be of a higher quality and again, better QA to ensure reliability, right? These guys are expecting to be uh, making money off this graphics card and they need it to work. And AMD has kind of historically had issues with their drivers, you know, whenever they release you know, new graphics cards and CPUs and stuff. It always takes them a couple iterations to iron it out. That hopefully should not be the case with a workstation graphics card. And then they also have certifications that go along with a lot of the professional applications, you know, whether you're using a 3D software like whatever Maya or, uh, you know, video editing like DaVinci Resolve and stuff, Premiere Pro, they have certifications for their software that it should work um, with all that stuff. Um, and then one last side note, I don't want to ramble too long, but you don't get ray tracing with the 5000 series um, AMD graphics card. But what the workstation, the pro workstation graphics card give you the opportunity to do is create in ray tracing. So through the AMD's pro render software, you can build programs and applications using ray tracing technology. Um, so if you're into 3D animation, whatever, you can, it'll take advantage of the ray tracing technology to build those programs, but you can't game with ray tracing. So that's kind of the little trade-off there. And then last thing, this is a Gen 4 GPU, uh, and I'm using a Gen 4, you know, motherboard and all that sort of stuff. So that was the last reason why we went with that. So those are the parts. We're gonna go ahead and dive into just some synthetic benchmarks and then I'll kind of come back and show the completed build uh, once we're done with that. And then, like I said, stay tuned for some of these follow-on videos to see how this PC um, has come together and what it actually can do. So I appreciate it, guys. God bless.